Hello and welcome back to part two of my Dungeon Blitz Blood Castle series. Um, if you haven't watched part one, I will put a link up here and in the description below, and I would recommend that you watch that first. I am uh, The Lone Adventurer, and this is my channel in which I play games like this, where we're doing exploration of fantastical places with characters who inevitably die. Now, we have already made a start in our delve into the Blood Castle with our adventurer Rex. Rex took a bit of a battering from some zombies. Um, thankfully he found a ration and he's back up to eight wounds. Um, uh, he was taken down to five by the zombies. He did find a little bit of gold in that room, so that's pretty sweet. And that was only room number two of the, uh, of, of the castle. So we need to keep on going. We need to try and find out what's going on in this castle and maybe find a bit more gold so that I can heal and, and buy additional bits and pieces. So we're in here, we're going to go through this door here and see what room we find beyond. And for that we're going to roll 2d6 and that will give us a number. Number 52. We've got a large unfurnished room with two exits. There are two wolves in this room. Mm. Wolfy room, eh? I tend to number each room. It's not really necessary, but it allows me to track what happened in each room and things like that. And we've encountered wolves before, so we know all the details about them already. I've got them noted up here. They have six points of uh, damage each. So they can take six hits before they uh, are defeated. Um, oh, and the other thing we need to do is tick off the uh, room here, because you only uh, find each room once. So if I were to roll 52 again, I would go on to 53 and find uh, that room instead. So we've got two wolves to fight. So they're vicious, which gives them plus one in defense. And because it's a large room, they can sort of support each other. So the first wolf will attack me and the second wolf gives him a plus one bonus. Uh, they get a plus one attack bonus anyway, they've got a defense of seven, and they're vicious, which means that they always do an additional point of damage when they hit. So hopefully this is gonna go better than the zombies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, um, am I gonna do a little cheat? I was intending to eat a ration before I came into this room. But now that I've come into the room, I don't think I should really, because you can only eat a ration once you're in a combat by uh, uh, missing your um, missing your actual attack. So you have to snaffle down your ration instead of doing an actual attack, which always struck me as kind of insane, like pausing during a fight and and uh, eating some crisps, but. Um, there you go, then's the rules. I don't make the rules, I just follow them. Before we do the fight, we need to roll for, um, whatchamacallit, awareness. See whether this monster has noticed us. One, unaware, that's good. That means I get a free attack before the combat begins properly. So let's do it. Oh, that's good. So I have rolled 11, to which I add my attack, 12, 13, 14. The uh, defense of a wolf is seven. So the difference 
uh, between 14 and 7 is 7. So my margin of success is 7 plus an, an additional one for my mace. Uh, so theoretically I'd be doing 8 points of damage, which quite comfortably finishes off that first wolf. Didn't even know what hit him. And that was my free pre-combat encounter uh, attack because they weren't paying attention to what was going on. They were just chilling out, uh, minding their wolfy business. So now I get to do my first proper attack. Oh, 10. Oh, it's going to be a good roll in today. 10 plus 3 is 13. Again, against the defense of 7. So this time I'm doing 6 points of damage. So the wolves didn't even get to attack me. Great. Right, so once you're done with the fighting, which we are, we can either flee, rest or search. Last time I searched for treasure, I'm wondering maybe this time I should rest and recover some of my wounds. So I would heal half of any lost wounds. I'm currently on eight wounds. Uh, a total of 18, which means I've lost a total of 10 wounds, so I can regain 5, which is pretty sweet. Take me back up to 13 wounds. Alright, so I didn't get to search for treasure, but at least I feel a little bit stronger in the old wound department. So with that done, we can go on to another room. 22. A cold but well-appointed bedchamber. A corpse in a white gown lays upon the ornate four-poster bed. There are two exits. When you enter, the ghost bride begins to stir. Oh, is that a special kind of enemy we have to fight? If you have the tag blessed, which we don't, ignore this monster's terror rule. If you search the room, add two to the roll. So first thing to do is to draw the room. I'm gonna say I went through here. There's my bed. I'm not gonna draw the corpse on it. Tell you what, the ghost bride sounds scary, so I am glad I healed up to 13 hit points. Let's have a look. Ghost Bride. Plus one attack, eight defense, four wounds. Okay, so not too many wounds. Ethereal and terror. Defense of eight. Now what do ethereal and terror mean? Ethereal, this monster has a ghostly body that is difficult to harm. I can never suffer more than one wound from a successful attack. Ah, so only four wounds, but I have to do those points of damage on four separate attacks. So we're going to have at least four attacks going on. Ooh, and terror. This monster is so horrifying to behold that you suffer minus one to attack checks when fighting it. Ooh, so this could be, this could be uh, a tough one. There was nothing about ignoring awareness, so I need to roll to see whether the uh, ghost is aware of us. Oh, the ghost is aware of us. And indeed waiting. Monsters are expecting you and attack without warning. The monster gets a free attack before combat begins. Curses. All right, so the monster gets plus one to attacks. Here we go. Oh, that's bad. 10, 11, because of the plus one. My defense is seven. So I'm taking four points of damage. I hope I don't die. I hope Rex doesn't die. Okay, so now we go into my first attack. Oh, that's low. Six. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, it doesn't matter that it's low as long as it's not too low, which I don't think it is. Have I written plus two attack? I don't think it is plus two attack, is it? Ghost Bride? No, it's plus one. I'm not sure why I wrote that. Right. 
Um, so what happened? Oh, I rolled six, seven, eight, nine. The defense of the ghost bride is eight. So I've got a margin of success of one, which is enough to do one point of damage. But actually, that's all I can do anyway because of the ethereal special rule. Okay, so that was my first proper attack, which means that now the ghostly bride needs uh, to do her first proper attack. That's better. Three plus one is four. My defense is seven, so that fails. Into my next attack. Six, seven, eight, nine. I've just realized in the first round, because of terror, I should have had a minus one to my attack check. And I think that means I wouldn't have done that point of damage. However, I do do a point of damage in this round because I rolled nine. And the def six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'd get a minus one because of the um, terror. Uh, which means that only eight, and the Ghost Bride has a defense of eight. So actually, I haven't even done a single point of damage yet, I don't think. It's frustrating. And then she's going to attack me. Oh, that's okay. Four plus one is five, which doesn't hit my defense. So now I get to do another attack. I need some high numbers here. And I've also just realised that throughout the whole game, I've been ignoring my lever armour. Um, yeah, so let's say I only took, I took one less point of damage in the last round. So I just rolled five, which is low, six, seven, eight. So I failed to do any damage there. Bride attacks me back. Six, seven, eight, plus one is nine, which is a margin of success of two against my defense of seven. I get plus one. Oh no, I've already factored in the defense, haven't I? So I added that. Right, so actually I am on nine. Six, seven, eight, plus one is nine, which means the Ghostly Bride is doing additional two points of damage, taking me down to seven. I really need to start actually damaging this irritating spectre. That's more like it. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Um, I don't think I need to work out my margin of success on that one. That's definitely doing a point of damage. Only one though, because I can only do one at a time. So then the bride attacks back. Oh, good. No damage done. Then I attack. Rex attacks. That's better. 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, minus one for the ethereal. No, sorry, for the um, terror is uh, down to 12. But uh, that's enough because the defense of the ghost bride is only eight. So there we go, half dead. Ghost Bride attacks me back. Good, there we go. Now I'm gonna attack again. Eight, nine, 10, 11, less one for the terror is 10, which gives me a margin of success of two, enough to do a point of damage. Only one to go. But before I get to attack again, the Ghost Bride attacks me. Oh, low. Thank you, Dice. Thank you for being nice to me. Okay, so I get to do an attack. Oh, wow. I mean, that is some lucky rolling, it's got to be said. So that's easily enough to do the final point of damage to the Ghost Bride, killing her or vanquishing her I guess because presumably she's already dead um, so just looking back at the room oh there's two exits two exits out of this room 
need to just add an additional exit next to the bed. Uh, ignore that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if you search the room, add plus two to the roll. So my health is down to seven, which is low. But I can't help but fancy seeing if there's any treasure in here. Right. Okay. See what treasure there is. Well, this is just searching the room, I guess. A nine. A healing potion. Cool. I think I'm also, at this time, going to take the opportunity to use one of my rations to increase my wounds by three, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so that room is done. So we need to go on to another room. Right, so I think I'm gonna go, am I gonna just keep going this way? Nah, I'll leave, we'll leave that door. I'm gonna go up in this direction, see what we've got beyond the there. Oh, no, I'll re-roll, because I usually roll one of each color. 46. A small room with a creaking wooden floor and scratches on the wall. There are two exits. Two skeletons in decaying armour are in this room. Okay. Right. Two skeletons. Two exits. You get a lot of... You're never going to run out of doors to go through in this game. I'll say that much. Let's have a look, we got plus one attack, defense of seven and six wounds. Okay, so they're pretty pretty beefy. Um, and they are undead. Monsters with the undead special rule are slow to react, minus one to awareness rolls when first encountering these monsters. But then that is it. That is the only weird thing about them. Because I've got a mace, I do get plus one versus skeletons, which is pretty sweet. So I'm just going to turn to the awareness table. Actually, I just need to remember what we've got. Ah, uh, we do. On the back, we've got uh, we've got some reminders of things. That's pretty cool. All right, so in a small room, monsters do not gain a bonus for outnumbering the hero. So I need to remember that because we're in a small room. And this is the awareness table. Four. Ready. The monsters have noticed you. Um, so I only get a free attack if I have a ranged weapon and I'm in a large room, neither of which are the case. So we just go into normal combat with me attacking first. Right, so I'm attacking. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, all right. So I think I might have possibly been adding on this plus one to my um, attack roll, and that's not actually how it works. I guess you add that on to your damage, which is your margin of success. Um, so I think I might have done that wrong a couple of times. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, eight, nine, ten. Uh, and they've got a defense of seven, so I've got a margin of success of three, to which I add two for my mace. So five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now um, the skeleton gets to attack me back. Six. Attack bonus of one, so seven, which equals my defense, but you need to be greater than defense to do any damage, so no damage done to Rex. Okay, so let's try and do that final point of damage needed to kill the first skeleton. Note that the skeleton didn't get an attack bonus um, for having a skeletal backup because that doesn't happen in a small room. Ooh, that's not good. Four, five, six, seven. So I haven't done any damage this round. Skeleton attacks me back. 
The skeleton doesn't do any damage. Okay, back to the start and me attacking. It's a bit better. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and the defense of seven. So I've comfortably uh, 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 defeated the first skeleton. Now I can move on to attacking the second skeleton. Six, seven, eight, nine. Um, which gives me a margin of success of two, to which I add two for my mace for four. One, two, three, four. Didn't kill the skeleton, gets to attack me back. Six, seven, doesn't meet my defense of seven, so no damage done. Back to me again. Ugh. Fail to do any damage, so the skeleton, not believing its luck, gets to attack me again. Oh, a bit worse. Six, that's ten, plus one is eleven, which is uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, doing four points of damage. Annoying. Thought it was going well then. Thought it was going well. Uh, okay, come on, let's finish it off. Four, five, Six, seven, eight, or oh, just about to give me a margin of success of one, to which I add two for my mace, killing the final skeleton. All right, okay. I don't think there is anything of note about this room. I'm now thinking maybe instead of writing a random number, maybe I should write the actual number of the room. Wouldn't that make a hell of a lot more sense? Okay, so now I need to decide if I'm going to rest or search for treasure. I'm only on six, which means that if I rested, my uh, depleted wound total is 12, which means I would regain six wounds. Okay, I think I'm gonna use a ration. I'm not sure if this is the best way to go about things, but yeah, there we go. Use a ration to go up to nine wounds and then roll on the treasure table. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A skeleton key. Discard this item to automatically open one locked door. Okay, well, I guess that's cool. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the maximum number of things I can carry. So I should probably think about using one of my wine skins. Oh, I've got a healing potion as well. That's a good point. What does the healing potion do? What does the wine skin do? Let's find that out. So a wine skin. Drink at the start of combat to ignore the effects of terror. Ah. So I could have used a wine skin during my fight with the ghostly bride to ignore the terror effect, which would have made that fight a lot less painful. Healing potion, look, they cost 10 gold. Use it any time to restore half of all lost wounds. You can use it at any time, which means you can use it during a combat. So that's quite valuable. Right, roll to see where we are going. We're gonna go, um, we're gonna keep going up, I think. So we'll go up here. 16. A finely furnished room hung with tapestries. There is one exit. There are two giant rats in this room. Okay, well hopefully giant rats aren't too terrifying. This was supposed to be a big room. I feel like I should have made that slightly bigger to differentiate between a big room and a regular room. But it doesn't really matter. I'm going to put a pile of rubble in the corner of this room just because just because, you know, it's something to do, isn't it? Put a cobweb in the corner of that room. Doesn't really look like a cobweb, actually. Okay. Right, so where are we at? We're in room 16. I think I am going to start using those room numbers. So that's room 16. So I called this game sort of a one and done uh, sort of thing and I guess it probably is although you could totally you know 
play through this more than once. There just won't be any surprises the second time round. But I now realise that there are so many rooms in this castle that you could really keep going for quite a while, fleeing at any point if you need to. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to play through a couple more rooms in this video and then I might leave it for the time being. If it proves successful, then maybe I'll come back and uh, do a couple more videos as well. I'm waffling now. Um, we're in room 16. We've got one exit, which I've drawn. There's two giant rats. Now I've said that, I'm probably gonna, you know, die during this encounter. Giant rats, okay, they don't look too scary. So they've got an attack bonus of nothing, a defense of six and four wounds each. So giant rats look like they're sort of the standard beastie for the castle, which makes sense, it's a big castle. Castles have rats, big castles have big rats. We're going to do the awareness roll to see if we capture them unaware. Two. They are unaware. I get a free combat. A free attack before combat begins. Ooh, and I do very little damage. Two uh, plus uh, three is just not going to be enough against their defense of six. Okay, all right, into combat. And I do my first proper attack. Seven, eight, nine, ten gives me a margin of success of four plus one because I've got my mace. So I'm doing five points of damage. It's easily enough to kill the first one. Then I can move on to the next rat. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Gives me a margin of success of six, plus one for my mace for seven. So those rats are dead. Cool. Didn't present too much of an issue to me. Let's have a look at the old treasure table. See if there's any treasure in this room. Six. One gold coin and a ration. Why not? Takes me up to four gold coins. Um, I'm going to immediately eat the ration, taking me up to 12 wounds. All right, let's keep going, shall we? Let's have a look through into the next room, find out what's in there. 41. Every wall in this room is lined with bones. There are two exits. When you enter, a bone giant begins to stir. Yikes. So that sounds like a worse baddie. <laughs> so let's find out all about the Bone Giant. Bone Giant, oh, he is a beast. Look at that, he's got the most wounds of any creature. Oh, and he's undead, and he's strong, and he gets a plus two attack bonus. Jeez. And he's undead and strong. So undead um, is good for me. That means I roll minus one to awareness. So hopefully I will get an attack in at the start because I'm going to need it. And he's strong. This monster always inflicts at least one wound on a successful attack. Even if the margin of success is zero or the hero discards a piece of armour, which you can do. I never mentioned that, but you can discard your armour to negate an attack, which might be a sensible thing to do in a pinch. Not, not sure I'm liking the sound of this one. Okay, let's see if I catch the bone giant unaware. One. That's good. So I get a free attack. All right, here we go. Good, 10, 10, where am I looking? 11, 12, 13. And the bone giant has got a defense of eight. So, eight. So that gives me a margin of success of five. Plus one for my mace, so a margin of success of six. God, that's a good start, isn't it? 
Okay, so this that was before the first round of combat. So I've come in. I've seen Rex has seen this gigantic bone monstrosity, and has immediately smashed him on the back before he, we've, he's even realised that we're in the room. He turns around. We have our first attack. Uh, and that's also amazing. <laughs> Eleven. 12, 13, 14 gives me a margin of success of 7 plus 1, 8. 8 points of damage. What a tremendous uh, fight for me. Um, the Bone Giant is immediately smashed, doesn't get a chance to hit me even once. In room 41. Uh, nothing else special going on in the room. Uh, I might draw a couple of bones. Probably too small for you to see, but makes me happy. Right, so do I search for treasure or do I heal? Well, given that I didn't suffer any damage in that one, I think it'd be rude not to search for treasure. So let's roll on the treasure table. Four. A silver, no, a vial of holy water. Oh, well, the, the issue here is that I no longer have room for a sufficient amount of gear. I, 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 I'm at my carrying capacity. So do I keep the vial of holy water and chuck something else out, or do I just leave the vial of holy water? So holy water... Use as a non-combat action, a single undead monster immediately suffers d3 damage. So that's 1, 2, or 3 points of damage. That doesn't strike me as that amazing. Because you have to do it instead of your combat. So I'm going to leave the holy water. I'm going to leave the holy water, and I'm going to leave this video there, I think. But I... I mean, I knew this game was going to be up my street because it's very much in the four against darkness uh, note quest vein of things. Um, it's definitely got um, a note quest sort of vibe to it. Uh, but I, I enjoyed that more than I thought I was going to, to be honest. I thought it was going to be a bit insubstantial. Um, but it's not. It's actually got a, quite a lot going on. And look, in that in that session, I mean, what what have we done here? One, two, three, four, five rooms out of all those total rooms. So there's an awful lot more to do. So yeah, that was that was quite a lot of fun. I liked it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it too. That's uh, Dungeon Blitz. As I said in the first video, it is available this first uh, volume is available on uh, drive through RPG. I'll put a link in the description below and it's available for free, I think. So get it yourself, have a little play. Um, I've been the lone adventurer. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, let me know if you liked it because um, I could do a couple more of Blood Castle. Um, or or I could just carry on playing it on my own. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.